Tudor cooking with Claire. Now today I'm really wrapped up because uh, it's December and we've got really bad weather here in Spain at the moment, uh, lots of flooding in our region. And I live in a 300 year old house uh, with no central heating, so uh, it does get a little bit chilly, so hence the body warmer and jumper. But today I'm going to make a drink that will warm me right through. And it's uh, a drink with a bit of a Harry Potter kind of theme because it's called buttered beer. And obviously JK Rowling used uh, a lot of historical kind of, uh, you know, evidence and mythology and everything in her books. And so I'm sure that she was inspired by this uh, Tudor recipe. Now the recipe appears in the 1594 publication the Good Housewife's Handmaid for the Kitchen by Thomas Dawson, who also wrote uh, two other books about um, sort of cooking and caring for the house. He wrote The Good Housewife's Jewel and the Book of Carving and Sewing. Now, here is the recipe from Dawson's book, which is available uh, to read online. I can give you the links for it. To make buttered beer, take three pints of beer, put five yolks of eggs to it, Strain them together and set it in a pewter pot to the fire and put to it half a pound of sugar, one pennyworth of nutmegs beaten, one pennyworth of cloves beaten and a half pennyworth of ginger beaten. And when it is all in, take another pewter pot and brew them together and set it to the fire again. And when it is ready to boil, take it from the fire and put a dish of sweet butter into it and brew them together out of one pot into another. Now the website oakden.co.uk have taken this recipe and they've given us sort of a modern version um, with um, you know modern amounts for us to follow. They actually talk about the recipe being from 1588 but um, the Good, Good Housewife's Handmade for the Kitchen actually dates to 1594. Well the, the one that I found uh, said the earliest date was 1594 anyway. So for this modernised uh, recipe, you need three bottles or um, three cans, um, three lots of 500 millilitres, so one and a half litres of good quality British ale. Not lager, you're looking for a sort of old traditional style ale. Now you can actually find these worldwide. I mean, I'm here in Spain and um, we have sort of British corner shops here where you can buy sort of British goodies. So you'll be able to get hold of it in, in most countries. Um, things like there's Bishop's Finger and Green King and lots and lots of uh, beers that are made by, um, you know, sort of traditional breweries. This one I'm using today is called Gold Hobgoblin. Now I actually chose this because it's from the Witchwood Brewery and we used to live uh, near the Witchwood Brewery. Um, so I've chosen that. It says about it, gilt edged golden refreshment full of mischievous character. So I thought yes that's that's the one I want to use for this. So I'm going to pour my three cans and each of them is 500 millilitres into my large saucepan here. Now they're the typical spices that you uh, sort of relate to the Tudor period. We've got some cloves and the recipe says to use half a teaspoon of ground cloves. I had whole cloves and I've just done them in a mortar and pestle so that's approximately half a teaspoon. You often find cloves in uh, Tudor recipes, they're very very popular. And then the next thing we add is another kind of Tudor staple of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Now you can use powdered nutmeg or I grated this from a whole nutmeg. So we add that. And then another Tudor traditional ingredient is ginger. Now it says about a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. So I'm having a bit of a guess at that. 
and I'm putting that in. So I've put my spices in and I'm now going to take it over to the hob to heat. I'm just going to slowly uh, heat the mixture, the spices I'm just stirring into the beer. We're going to bring it up to the boil and then turn it down to a simmer. Now if you're going to do this as a drink for adults, you can just bring it to a simmer and then move on to the next step. But if you're going to be serving it to children, then you'll want to heat it to about 140 degrees C um, using um, a sugar thermometer, the kind of uh, thermometer that you use for making uh, fudge, toffee or jam. And um, that's bringing it up to that temperature and actually uh, boiling it for a bit longer will boil off the alcohol so that you'll have an alcohol free butter beer but I'm actually going to do this uh, for adults so I'm just going to bring it to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer just for a bit. While the beer and the spices are mixing and actually the beer as it comes up to boil and goes uh, clear rather than frothy we're going to prepare the uh, egg yolks and the sugar. This you'll need five egg yolks, so I've separated uh, five eggs and of course you can use the whites for meringues or anything that you want to do. So I've got five egg yolks and then 200 grams of brown sugar, so demerara natural brown sugar, so that's 200 grams. And I'm just going to whisk, whisk those together with my hand whisk until they're light and frothy. Okay, I've just removed um, the beer and spice mixture from the heat and brought it over. I'm now going to add the egg yolks and sugar mixture. I'm stirring as I do it. It was all frothy as you add it, it's wonderful. Okay. So I've added the egg and brown sugar mixture and I'm just stirring it uh, to combine it. Then we need to take it back over to the heat and then just put it on a low heat, bring it up to a low heat and just let it thicken slightly. We don't want to bring it uh, up to a boil or anything because we really don't want to scramble the eggs. So I'm just going to take it over to the hob and heat it on a low heat just to thicken it slightly. So I've brought it over to the hob and now I'm just uh, beginning to heat it on a low heat for about five minutes just to warm it through and just to let it thicken slightly. So we'll just let that heat up for five minutes. spice and sugar and egg mixture now uh, for five minutes and now I'm going to add 100 grams of unsalted butter and I've diced it so it's nice and small and add that in and then we just want to melt that into the mixture and we're going to uh, cook it on a low heat for about 10 minutes and once it's melted, I'm going to start uh, frothing it um, with a hand whisk. And it says to froth it so that it goes like a, a sort of milky tea, a milky cup of tea. And you, you can see how it does look like a, a tea, tea with uh, yellow blobs floating in it at the moment. So I'm actually going to swap my wooden spoon for my whisk and just melt that in while frothing it at the same time. Right, my mixture has been uh, 
are cooking now for 10 minutes. The uh, butter is beautifully melted into it and you can see that I've got a lovely uh, frothy mixture here. Now what we do is we turn it off and we're going to let it cool down to a drinkable temperature now, a, a temperature that we can pour into sort of beer tankards or glasses and serve so that people don't scold themselves. Now the oakden.co.uk website talks about how this has got quite an acquired taste really with the sort of the tanginess of the clothes and it says that um, what you can do is kind of make it more mellow by actually taking um, equal quantities of this mixture and mixing it with an equal quantity of cold milk and having a sort of a milkier drink. So to do that you'll need to chill this mixture so that you're, uh, you're having a cold drink. This one's meant to be served warm, warm buttered beer and then there's a chilled buttered beer uh, variation as well. So I'm going to try both. Right, I've just let this cool for a few minutes. I don't want to cool it too much because I am serving it to adults and I am serving it as a warming drink. So you can see that it's still quite hot. But uh, it's nice and frothy. Now, as I said, you can do a cold version of it and I've actually uh, let this um, chill. I've got 100 millilitres because my glasses, these are actually absinthe glasses but they work perfectly for, uh, for drinks like this. Um, as they take approximately 200 millilitres, I've got 100 millilitres of my buttered beer mixture and then I've got 100 millilitres of fresh milk. So I'm going to just combine those together and just whisk them just to combine them and also to add a bit of froth. Now you can actually make the drink, both drinks, both the chilled and the hot version, more and more frothy by sort of pouring it from one container to another a few times just to get a really kind of frothy head on it. But I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to serve that as my cooler, milky version. And then, just gonna froth this a bit more with the uh, hand whisk. And as I said, I could work hard to get a real head on it, but I'm not too worried about it. And I'm going to ladle some of that. And you can see how it kind of looks like milky tea. Laid all that in as well. Guess you could even put some ice cubes in the uh, the chilled version. Right now is the taste test. Now this is the hot version. You can see. Oh, that's lovely. I always say that, don't I? But. It is lovely. I really like this version. As you as you put your face to it, you get the real kind of hoppy smell from the beer. I've never tasted anything like that. I can't draw any comparisons. Um, yes, a sort of milky buttery beer with spices uh it is exactly what it says buttered beer but the spices are lovely i can't pick out any one spice it's a real mixture of warming spices that's such a great drink to have by the fire on a cold winter's night or to serve at a christmas party instead of mulled wine that is perfect i love that now i'm going to try the milky version. And this might go down well, I suppose, with children if you've done the boiling off of the alcohol. Yep, that is much mellower. It's not as spicy, it's not as hoppy. Yeah, it's also almost got it's almost got a caramel kind of taste, and I suppose that's the um the butter and the sugar and then the, the milk coming through. So yeah, it's almost like a caramel kind of milkshake. Yeah, 
I like both versions and I think that would work really well for any children that you have at a party. So buttered beer, I think, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling knew what she was doing when she brought buttered beer into the uh, Harry Potter um, books. Um, and of course this is a 1594 recipe, obviously it's been modernised, but the um, modern kind of translation of it has kept the kind of the quantities of the ingredients, uh, you know, as accurate as possible. It works really well, it's really easy and it's really tasty. Anyway, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.